Let's take a more in-depth look at the papers now. We know that you can get to all the papers through the paper libraries. If you want to import libraries and export paper libraries, you can. There's some options to customize your paper libraries palette. You can change the view size of the icons if you want to make them larger or smaller. But you can also create your own papers. So what we'll do in the bottom of the papers library is we'll click on make paper. This palette will generate different effects for papers, so we can choose a pattern for halftone, new halftone, line, diamond, ellipse, triangle. You can play with the spacing and the angle. If I wanted kind of a quilted pattern, something like this would work. I'll click on OK. Now if I scroll down to the bottom of my paper library that I was using last, I have quilt. I can click on that, and if I select the chalk or a brush that uses paper textures, I can paint, and you can see I get that nice quilted texture. If I go to the papers panel, I can increase the scale of that, and it's a little more apparent now. So that's one way to make a paper. Let's take a look at another way to do it, and that is to capture a paper. So let's go ahead and create a new canvas. Let's set our measurement to pixels, and let's make it 512 by 512 at 72 pixels per inch. This is the ideal size for a paper texture. And whatever we paint onto this canvas now, we can turn into a paper. So let's take a look at our options. We can go to Effects, Esoterica, Custom Tile, and we could make a brick pattern, or we can make a hexagon, or a square, triangle. We could change the grout thickness. You could click on OK. So this could be a particular paper. What you would want to do is you want to go to Select All to select the whole paper. And in the paper libraries, you would go to Capture Paper. Let's call this Triangles. Crossfade will fade the edges of the paper together to make the pattern more seamless. If we look in the bottom of our paper textures here, we can see that that paper texture now exists. Let's click on that to make it active. We'll switch back to a document that we can paint on. I'll select the chalk. And if we paint, you can see we get that really cool paper that we created. Let's take a look at another way to generate a pattern. Let's go to Window Menu, and let's open up the Media Control Panel that's called Patterns. If you click in the top right submenu dialog, we can choose Make Fractal Pattern. We can play with these settings here to get a fractal pattern. Maybe we'll use something like this. Let's set the size to 512, and we'll click OK. That's going to create a new document for us. We'll choose Select All, and then we'll go to the Paper Libraries, and we'll choose Capture Paper. We'll call this one Streaky, and we'll click on OK. I'll go back to the document where I can paint. I'll select that paper, and I'll select my chalk brush and paint. And you can see that I get that nice, streaky paper texture now. Let's take a look at yet another way to make a paper, and that's just to go ahead and paint it manually. You could select something like the sponge, and paint in some texture like this. You could also use the chalk brush along with some pre-existing paper textures to draw in a little bit of texture. You could even use the blenders to blend this up and make it look kind of streaky. Or you could tap. I'll just add a few layers of some different black and white colors. You want to just work in grayscale here. Let's try this for our paper texture. Let's go to Select All. We'll go to the paper libraries and we'll capture paper. And we'll call this one marble. Switch back to my document and then scroll down and select that new paper called marble. And if I draw with that, you can see I get that paper texture as well. And I can make it bigger if I want to see more of that texture. I can increase the contrast if I want it to stand out more. Now I have this really nice organic stone texture that was really easy to make. You can also invert the paper by clicking on Invert Toggle. That will flip it inside out. So you can see now my highlight and shadow are on the opposite side. You can also rename the paper and set a custom icon for it. If we go to the paper libraries, we can import and export our paper libraries. If you right click on a paper, you can rename it or delete it. I'm gonna just go ahead and delete this paper. Drawing a seamless pattern is another good way to create a custom paper texture or flow map. So to do that, we're going to need the Patterns palette, which is found under the Window menu, Media Control Panels, Patterns. We can see that here. If we click on the top right submenu dialog, 
we can choose define pattern. And then once we start painting, you'll see that as you move from one side to the other, it loops your brush. If you've ever played Pac-Man, that's kind of what happens when you go to one side of the screen on Pac-Man, you end up on the other. So we could make this paper texture something like this. And now this is going to be seamless on all sides. So we'll go to select all. We'll go to the paper libraries and we'll choose capture paper. Let's save this paper as weave. And I'm going to set it to zero crossfade. And we can see that paper appears at the bottom of the paper library. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to select the chalk brush and let's try that out. And you can see we get this seamless pattern that just repeats forever.